everyone, Mango Seven here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic Seven. Today we're gonna talk about um kind of the top five best free-to-play style units for newer to, to veteran players. Um, maybe not five, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. We'll see. I haven't counted. I just want to talk about all the ones I think are kind of worthwhile building or considering where you might use them, how to build them, um, everything about them I can think about talking about. Uh, so also to note is a lot of these should be pretty self-explanatory for veteran players. So, um, this might not be the video for you. This might be for, uh, super new players and that's always good. So the first person we're going to talk about here is Hazel. I really, really like Hazel because it's really hard to get useful debuffs on your healers, and Unhealable is a very, very useful debuff, especially if you're against Golems or maybe one of the bosses in the bug raid that I can never remember the name of. Unhealable is fantastic. She also has a pretty solid second skill that's just meant um, as a little boost to healing. It's also two-turn cooldown, which is great when you combine it with Candlestick or something like that. And finally, we have a girl in uniform. Not only is this animation amazing, but the actual skill is pretty solid too. Um, maybe not as good as Angelica's third, or not as good as Destina's third, but it does boost your attack, it does um, give fire units extra attack bonus, and it does do a pretty decent amount of healing. Um, that said, uh, she may be hard to run as your only healer unless you have Rod of Amaryllis or Celestine or something like that. Um, so, so maybe consider doing her if you have Rod, because it does just make her so much better. Adding that little extra healing in definitely makes her um, a good enough solo healer. As for her stats, it's kind of difficult with her, but um, she's got, uh, let's take a look here, and this is always how I decide. I take a look at her base speed. She's got 91 base speed, so she's probably going to want speed on her boots. And then for your ring and your neck, you can really toss up between HP percent and attack percent. Um, either are fine. I've tried both. I don't really notice too much of a difference uh, in her healing, but she does survive a lot better with her HP. Um, also to notice, she could use a little bit of effectiveness, but not really uh, too important. Um, and as for that, I'd probably try to force a speed set if you can get to it, just because uh, even though she's only got 91 base speed, that still adds like 22 speed or something like that, which is definitely worth it for a speed set. Um, so yeah, that's about it for her. Uh, next up is Lorena. Lorena's a, Lorena's a pretty obvious one. Everybody knows about her. Um, she just does an insane amount of damage, and she does it well. She's just a pure damage dealer. Um, attacker speed boots, uh, attack ring, and crit damage, crit rate, or attack neck are the preferred. As for her sets, honestly, basically anything works, just anything offensive. Um, crit subsets are fantastic. Same with attack sets, same with abyss set, just because it has so many stats. Um, same with speed set is even okay on her. There's so many things that work. Just give her um, the Uber set is fantastic at the start too. Uh, there's not really much to say about her, but keep in mind, I forgot to mention this with Hazel, is if you are ever using one of these um, uh, spec change units, you really, really, really want them spec change. That's where they get so much of their power. And uh, you need a lot of farming to do that. So I really don't always recommend doing the spec change units unless you can farm um, the altar eight or higher because that makes them way, way, way stronger and you don't waste time farming something a little inefficient if you can't um, do eight. So keep that in mind. And we've got uh, two more spec change in a row, actually. The next one is Ruzin, and I think this is one of the most important ones on the list. This guy is just an all-around baller. Um, I have him on my alt build. He's one of my favorite units over there, probably my most enabling. I use him literally everywhere. Um, I, I can't think of a place I don't use him outside of Wyvern 11 or something like that, because he just does so much for your team. He's got two very powerful de debuffs, decrease speed and decrease attack. Um, both have a subpar chance of landing, to be honest. Like It, it really is low... Uh, hit rate on those but he's got so many debuffs and he goes so many times it really doesn't matter he's also got a combat readiness boost which is huge 20 percent um and then he has a continuous heal around it too and it's on a four turn cooldown and you can even make him go twice and put it on kind of a three turn cooldown it's basically always up and because he's so much faster than a lot of your other units he ends up lapping them and then you can keep the speed buff on them pretty easily and we can see here he's got 106 um, speed right now. I thought he had a little more than that. I remember it being like 114 or something, but we'll we'll go with 106. Either way, he gets a good 26-ish speed out of a Swift set. So you should definitely be using that if you can. Um, I like speed boots on him. And as for ring or neck, I like one HP and one attack just to kind of give him a little bit of effective um, attack damage and a little bit of survivability. Uh, also for him, um, four speed set, of course, as always. 
and effectiveness subset is pretty solid. You really want them at like 55% effectiveness, but speed is king for Ruzid, absolutely. Um, again, I've used them for every single boss battle in the raid, and I've used them for every uh, abyss stage since I've got them. I'm um, just an absolute fantastic unit, and he definitely gets outshone by so many others, and it makes me so sad. Um, next up is Clurry. And Clurry is insane. Uh, we all know this, as always. She is one of the best, if not like the best, free unit in the game at this point. Um, the only skill ups you need on her are two to three points in her flurry attack here. You absolutely need to get all of her um, skill awakenings through a specialty though, so make sure you get those. Specifically, second row on the bottom is a AoE heal to your team. Uh, that is so unbelievably important, one of the reasons why she's so fantastic. Also to note, this does not boost your AoE healing to your team, so you do not need to Molagora magic resistant health. Um, as for her skill set, um, yeah, I'm gonna say it. Uh, force another speed set if you can. Her number one priority is her speed. Everything else is lackluster, to be honest. Um, she gets 26 speed from a speed set, which is just fantastic. Um, she actually doesn't need to be too tanky either. I see a lot of people build her tanky, but in all honesty, for most PvE, uh, she's not the one tanking, your healer's the one tanking, so she doesn't actually need to be tanky. She's actually relatively amazing at 5 star too. So um, my priority for her is as fast as humanly possible. I do not care about basically anything else. After that, I try to get her effectiveness up to 55%, and then after that, I just go for whatever HP or defense I can um, after that. So that means speed for the ring for sure. Um, HP or defense for, or speed for the boots, HP or defense for the ring, IMO, and HP or defense on the neck. She cares zero about any offensive stats, so super keep that in mind. She's really, really easy to gear and should definitely just use your trickle down um, leftover gear, and she's just gonna be insane. Um, especially if you have Aureus. Aureus makes things so much better. If you have Aureus, throw it on her, put her somewhere else, don't make her tank, just let her soak with Aureus, and you're gonna be so much further in the game than without her. Um, next up, we have Kicker. No, I'm just kidding, not Kicker. Uh, we have Curious. And Curious is one of those ones you don't really want to build, but you kind of might have to just because it makes uh, Abyss so much easier. And especially if you're getting to Abyss really quickly and you haven't actually cleared um, too slowly. Like, if you take a long time in Abyss, you get your gear set up and then you can skip Curious. But if you're like me and you really pushed Abyss, and um, didn't really have the gear to back it up. Kyrus is a fantastic way to fix this. Um, she doesn't need much gear at all. She doesn't need much Molagora either, um, as in zero. You basically just line up your third skill, then do your first skill, then do your second skill, and then um, rinse and repeat. So with her, uh, as for her skills and stats, she really needs 55% effectiveness. That's really important. Um, after that, she needs to survive. Uh, actually, I would probably put surviving over effectiveness. And then after that, she needs speed. Um, another thing you can do, since she's going to be useful for Abyss, is just uh, ignore effectiveness. I know that sounds ridiculous, but you can make her as fast and as tanky as possible and then just rely on RNG for your effectiveness. Um, that's honestly what I did. I built her with basically no effectiveness every now and then. I would not land a debuff and i just quit out and start again. Um, didn't really take much time and I didn't have to put too much effort into her. And um, once you get the boss locked down with her, uh, you really don't need to rely on the RNG too much. So. Um, Maybe keep that in mind when you're gearing her out, just because uh, she's going to have your leftover gear. You don't care too much about her, but you want her to survive. Um, also, she works perfectly fine as a 5-star all the way up, so you don't need to um, really give her too much gear. And the other thing to mention is, after you finish your Abyss 80, you can basically just feed her and use her as a fodder for a 6-star, if that's something you're interested in. Um, so keep that in mind. She's definitely worthwhile to invest in. And I always get people asking if something's worth 5-starring. And in my opinion, it always is, especially as a three star, because you can just use them as fodder after, and it doesn't really take too much to level them up. Um, so next up is Jacked. Uh, Jack, our boy here, is kind of standing out lately because a lot of people are using him for Banshee 11. Um, he's got double debuffs on uh, per turn, 80% chance of a dispel here, and then also equipping him with Wondrous Potion. Just makes it so um, two debuffs buffs a turn. That's not many other people that can do that as a passive. Really, really, really impressive. He's also got continuous healing and increased speed on his third. Um, I really like Jekt. I used him really early game to kind of carry me through. Uh, one thing I will mention is he's not the best solo healer. If you do not have a team that can handle themselves, um, very, very not good enough solo healer. So pairing him with somebody like Hazel would be awesome because then you have a speed buff, you have an attack buff, 
You have um decent amount of healing from he Hazel, and you have a decent amount of healing from Jack, kind of talking topping everybody else off. He's also got decreased hit chance with this fantastic, really underrated debuff that makes things so much easier if you can land it. Um, as for how to build him, he does not scale off of HP, which is great, so all you need for him is as fast as possible, and yep, um, I'm gonna say it, Force of Speed set. He gets uh, 25, 26-ish speed from forcing a speed set. Speed boots are fantastic as always, and um, HP and HP for ring and neck IMO, just keep him surviving after that. Uh, and again, I don't really mention subsets for the people that force speed because it really doesn't matter too much. Just whatever you have the best of. If you have a good defense set, take it. If you have um, a crappy uh, crappy attack ring or something like that that is HP based and not good for an attacker, use it as a broken set. There's so many options you can do and do not sit there trying to force um, two sets on your units. If you're going to force something, just force speed. That's definitely my number one recommendation. And next up, we have... Um, I'm not going to mention light and dark units uh, unless they're free to play because Doris is obviously fantastic, but um, not everybody has her. So let's go through some other ones. And I hate having to mention this stupid face, but we have to do it. Uh, Terranar Guard, one of the best units in the game right now, just um, kicks everybody in the face, basically. Basically better than Luna or Kisei for uh, Wyvern 11-2. Um, just absolutely bonkers for Wyvern. He's also good for other things too, just because of the dual attacks and, and defense down and everything. Surprisingly good, surprisingly easy to build. You do not even have to four star him. I was doing Wyvern 11 with him at three star. Um, you can see some of my old videos with that if you want. But basically with him, you need 55% effectiveness as fast as possible and that's all that matters. You can give him unity set if you want. You can give him um, HP, you can give him attack, but really, all he needs is that um, speed and effectiveness for Wyvern 11. Um, super free unit, super easy to use, super easy to build. Um, unbelievably build enabling for your other units too. I just hate this guy, but I have to mention him just because of how good he is. Um, so many people don't use him and they hamper themselves because of it, uh, like me. But definitely if you're one of the people that don't mind using some random NPC, then that's super okay, and he will carry you for Wyvern 11 and everything like that. Um, as for other people here, Alexa is the final one I think we're going to talk about about three stars. Um, she's quietly an all-star. A lot of people are like, I can't do your Wyvern 11 run. You're a whale, Mango. You can't, you can't just tell me to use Kisei on your Wyvern 11. Um, and for those people that say that, you can use Alexa. Alexa does um, about the same, if not more, than Kisei, and also takes way less gear. She's just bonkers, just turn her skills off, um, do a bunch of attacking, uh, get all that Joker damage, and she is fantastic for Wyvern 11. As for outside of Wyvern 11, I'm honestly not sure, but her skill set looks okay for other things. Like, I feel like if you load up um, an Abyss boss with a ton of debuffs, she might do a ton with Crushing Blow. Um, the other thing too is she doesn't need to be six star either. She can do it just fine as four star or five star because all of her damage is coming from Joker, um, the artifact. So keep that in mind. Another uh, really, really easy person to build here. And finally, I'm going to mention Aether. And Aether is a tough one for me because I'm building Aether on my alt right now. Um, Aether is six star and I'm trying my darndest to have Aether heal Wyvern 11, but it's really hard. I've got Celestine, I just feel like his healing is just not there. Um, or maybe my Rose isn't tanky enough, I'm not sure what the problem is. But um, Aether has definitely helped me for other things in the game, and I've definitely used him for Abyss and for Raid as well. Uh, I like building him with speed on his boots, and attacker HP on his ring, and attacker HP on his neck. And as for the set, um, yep, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Force a speed set. Uh, he only gets about 21 speed. Or not 21. Um, he gets like 20, 22, 23 speed, I think, for his uh, speed set. So maybe somebody else is better with it and you can use an attack set or something instead. But the speed is just so important, especially on the boots, because um, with somebody as low speed as this and not being able to get uh, as much as others from a speed set, that extra flat speed from boots just really, really adds up. And holy, that's a lot of three-star units. I think that was like six or seven already we've talked about. Uh, there's two more I think I want to talk about here. And the two are Crozet. Um, this is kind of like Terranar Guard for me. I guess he's got a little better with the story. He's kind of funny, um, kind of a dummy, kind of gets wrecked by Tenebria. 
but he is basically one of the best for Wyvern 11 for tanks, especially for free-to-play people. You can get him through the connections. Um, he's boring to build, but he's just a super, super tank. Um, I kind of wish I built him over Rose, my alt, because I feel like I'd be having no problem if I did. Uh, he's also got attack down, which helps out as well. Um, he just does so many things. Maybe not the best uh, unit in the game, but he definitely will carry you through Wyvern 11 if that's what you need. And um, that's what a lot of people's end goals are right now. So um, it kind of makes me sad when people don't try Wyvern 11 because they don't have Angelica, for example, when they could easily build Crows at Terranar, Guard, Aether, and um, Alexa and be just fine. Um, all people on this list so far uh, all have no problem building it. Some are even better than the expensive whale alternatives. So uh, super keep that in mind, especially if you ended up with something like a Noble Oath to put on Crows that that makes them even tankier. And the last one I want to talk about here, um, did I pass her? That is Silk. Uh, Silk is one of those units that at the start of the game, if you were here for release, she was one of the most popular. You literally couldn't run into a team in PvP without Silk. And um, for some reason, she just super fell off. I'm not sure what happened, but I don't think she really got any worse. She's definitely still amazing for all sorts of PvE. Um, even PvP she's good for. She's great everywhere, and it's really sad to me I don't see more of her. Um, that said, I'm sitting here without any built on either account, so maybe I'm part of the problem. Um, she is really great. She has uh, decreased speed on her third skill, and having that decreased speed and increased speed is such a huge, 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 huge um, swing change in um, the combat readiness, so I, I love her third skill. She's also got a little bit of extra damage uh, with her passive here, and then um, some combat readiness decreasing on her first. Just a really powerful unit, especially for locking down um, the enemy, and might be especially great with somebody like Lydica to lock down uh, an Abyss boss or a Raid boss or something like that. Um, as for her build, she's really elastic too, but as always, um, yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I, I can't... I can't just stop saying it. Um, she's got 121 speed. Uh, speed is the most important stat in the game. Force a speed set on her. I feel like anybody over 110-ish speed, you just kind of have to force a speed set. Even if you don't have the best of gear, um, it's pretty hard to get more than 30-ish speed out of your speed sets. So um, out, of, out of other pieces if you don't use a speed set. So just like force your speed set on her. Speed boots as well. That puts you up to um, 151, 186 speed just with the speed set and speed boots. And then um, your substats after that, just try to go for as much speed as possible. It's also pretty important to have effectiveness because you do want to land that decreased speed. Um, as for rings and neck, you can really go with either attack or HP. Either are fine. Um, honestly, her attack doesn't matter too much, especially if you're using her for PvE. I'd rather have her survive, so maybe speed, HP, attack for boots, ring, neck um, is the way I would aim for it. Uh, that way, you can use your more powerful crit damage necks on your bigger DPS and... Um, you can use your attack on her. So yeah, um, I think that's everybody I wanted to talk about. I, I know a lot of people already knew a lot of this stuff. I only wanted to talk about purely free-to-play people. That's why I skipped a bunch of people you may, might be like, but Mango, what about this? Uh, I skipped them because 100% free-to-play was what I was aiming at here. I just wanted to show people that um, with the tools we have in game as free-to-play, you can do everything, uh, no problem, I would say. And you can even do Wyvern 11, you can even do up, up to Abyss 80 with all the free-to-play stuff, so um, super don't worry about that. Just work on things and uh, hopefully you get there. Uh, a lot of people just need to bite the bullet if you want and build a non-waifu. Uh, I know it's weird me saying that because I wouldn't do it, but uh, sometimes you just gotta, gotta do it to get that little extra push. Especially if it means getting to 80 and Abyss and getting that 80 Abyss set is just so powerful. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other characters you'd like me to go in depth into, any um, full reviews you'd like me to check out, any um, gameplay you'd like to see of any of these units, because I do have them all built on um, different accounts so I can show them off, uh, just let me know in the comments below. As always, uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye now!